Hello guys, you're welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so still in the series of background manipulation, how to turn your flat studio backdrop, just what you're looking at. Okay, let me just put it practically very flat. Yeah, something like this. So how to turn it from this to this amazing manipulation we'll have here. Isn't this beautiful? All right, so today I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how I was able to achieve this image. I will not just be dragging and dropping and be showing you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm be showing you how I did it. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So I'm going to practically build it up to see if I can still replicate this same image that I have here on this one. And now the beautiful part of it is that this background we are looking at right here. Let me just remove the lady, the beautiful lady. Where is she? Yeah, something like that. Hang on. Let's get this going. Okay. Solid color. Yeah. Force. Beautiful. All right. So the beautiful part of it is that we are giving out this particular background you are looking at right now to you in this video. All you need to do is to watch from the beginning till the end to get the password. And beautiful, the more beautiful part of it is that it's going to be coming in as a PSD file. So it's fully editable. You can change the number if you wish to. You can move stuff around in it. It's going to be coming in as a PSD file, not as a JPEG file, so that you can be able to recreate your own result and make it look peculiar to your style of work. Okay, so. Let's quickly get everything back again. All right, so we'll have this here, we'll have this, we'll have this. All right, so now let's get started. All we'll be doing is I will be dragging, we'll be moving uh, the props and the backgrounds and all of that into the uh, this particular one here. So we'll make sure that we do not miss anything. Yeah, all right, so let's get started. The first thing you are going to need to do to separate your image from your background, which I've already done, then make sure you have a smooth backdrop so you wouldn't have issues while working on your image. If you want to learn how we're able to do this, just go to the video in the description below and you're going to see a video that will teach you exactly how this separation was done. So I wouldn't want to take you through all of that. That is why I did this. So one major thing I did that I would want you to take note of is that this is the original backdrop. So I needed a separation between her and the background. That is why I created this solid color adjustment layer with a color very, very similar to what we have and very close to gray. Yeah, remember for some time now we've been dealing on gray. We've been dealing on gray because of the magic it does. Okay, so created this right here. And so it gives us that three dimensionality separates her from the background. This is the reason why we did it. That is the only thing. I wouldn't show you exactly how it's done. It's not hard. It's just for you to come here. Come here and go to your solid color. Maybe pick a color around this area. This is fine though. So just minimize it so you can be able to access the original color. Then pick a color around here. And we're good to go. So you have it there. So what I did majorly with this. The way it is. You are looking at the dimensions and all of that. Was that. I obviously changed the blend mode to multiply. So that it will even give, him, give me a more darker feel. Then I clean it off from the front over here. So we we'll have that separation. Then of course, reduce the opacity. If you look at it, let me open it up. If you look at it, it's in 7964 and all of that. So I'm going to delete this. I wouldn't want it again. Yeah, beautiful. So let's get started. Having done all this, let's start creating our magic. So the first thing you are going to be needing to bring in is your background. Yeah, the original background. And this is where the background is located. I'm just going to collapse all of this. So we're seeing what we are doing. So this is where the background is Yeah. Okay, so now I grouped the background. I think I need this. I grouped the background, everything into the same group so I can be able to move stuff around. So if I minimize this, you are going to notice that everything goes out. So the best thing you need to do, you can even turn on your auto, your auto select so that whenever you tap on anyone, it picks it up for you. So this is where my background is. So having done that, to avoid selecting other things, I'm going to off my auto select and now I can drag it around just the way I'm doing. Okay, so just going to move my background. This one, this is the one we are using for now. I will show you the reason why I had it duplicated, but for now, this is the one we are using. Yeah, so I'm going to drag this 
over to our image and drop it. Bam. So it just fits in. And but if yours is not fitting, it maybe it's floating. Just all you need to do is just move it around. You can even scale in and scale out. Yeah, like that. You can scale in and scale out and all of that. So I think it's properly fitted in. Like it the way it is already. So we're going to be using it this way. Now, the reason I have to duplicate it, I want to show you something quickly. I want to show you something quickly. So the reason I had to duplicate the background is that without this one, I noticed that here was kind of off. The color was off. It wasn't looking so beautiful with what we have over here. So we had to duplicate it to reveal this area to make it have that high key light. Because if you look at the image, it's looking like it's lighted from the right hand side because of how bright this area is. So what we did was that we needed to we needed to mimic this lightning on our body on this background. So that was why we had it duplicated. So to get that same effect, it's very simple. All you need to do is just to press Ctrl J. So you see here it's becoming very bright. But the issue is that every other place is joining in the brightness. So all you need to do is to create a mask and now reveal it for that particular area. Only just like that. See the way it's looking nice? Yeah, just like that. And you have the same effect. This is what I did. So if you look at the mask over here, you see that it's similar to what we have here in the mask. That was just uh, exactly what we did. And that was it. We are done. I think I like the lightning this way. Or maybe we'll see about that later. Let's leave it this way. So the next thing we'll be wanting to bring in is probably our, our book, our, our number, our wall canvas. So I think the wall canvas should come in. So I'm going to open the auto select, click on it to fix it. I'll off it again so I can easily drag it around. So I'm just going to move this over here and position it exactly where the other one is. Now, I want to show you something quickly. If you look at the wall canvas, you're going to notice that there is a, a shadow effect on it. Let me up the shadow. So if you up the shadow effect, it's going to appear just like a flat, a flat uh, canvas hanging in the air. It wouldn't have dimension. So we had, we had to add that drop shadow just to bring it very close to the wall to bring it very close to the wall and how did we do that you have to double click on your layer then come down to your drop shadow over here you come down to your drop shadow over here you you on it once you on it it's going to appear and just make sure you have your numbers just the same way mine is and you are going to have exactly the same kind of shadow i have here you can even use your move tool to change the direction of the shadow if you wish but I think I like what I have. So I'm going to be sticking with that. So we're going to quickly go forward to what we will do next. So the next thing I want to bring in is my five. Yeah, obviously. So the, the, the young lady in the image is five years. She's turning five as at the time the image was taken. So that was why you, you saw five over here. That was why you saw five. So we're going to be dragging the five over to the image and position it just the same way we position this one so we just drag it and position it now if yours is not appearing the same way mine is doing you have to use your alternate to scale it in or scale it out just like that if you feel it's too bold i think i like it this way but remember we want to do a uniform effect so let's try and mimic exactly what we have here so the idea of the b5 is that we are uh the mother says she needed it to be like a big five that her baby is turning big five so we could have just done a smaller five but we needed that touch of a big five yeah so that was why you saw it big and all of that so for the shadows yeah the same thing we did uh over the the canvas is the same thing we are doing for the five just simply add your shadow see the way it makes a lot of difference so looking at it this way is looking like it's floating in the air hanging with her exactly where she was but immediately the shadow was added where is our five yeah immediately the shadow was added it brought it close to the wall and i want you to notice something all my shadow i am taking it towards the left because the lightning in the image is coming from the right so if the image is coming from the right the shadow should obviously fall towards the left hand side and that the same way we brought in the shadow is exactly what we did for this one. Open your blend if, go to drop shadow and mimic exactly the number you see on mine. And you are going to have the same type of shadow. 
So if you want to create a different type of shadow, you just have to drag it around like this. So if you look at it, it's looking like it's now very far from the wall. So the closer the shadow is from the object, the closer it appears to the wall. But I wouldn't want to move it around. So I'm going to stick to what we have. All right, so moving forward, we will bring in our book and all of that. So I'm going to on my auto select once more, one more time and click over the book. So when you, when you click over it, it's going to find wherever it is and the layers and give it to you. So this is the book over here. I'm probably going to off it. Okay, so it's moving. Yeah, so we'll drop it over here and position it here. So I'm going to manually create the shadow in the image. I wouldn't be using the original shadow it has. I'm going to manually create the shadow for you. So you see how I created that one? Because that one wasn't a drop shadow effect at all. So we have our book placed in our image. How do you create a shadow? Just duplicate the book, Control J, go to the layer down and pick up your levels. Make it very dark, just like this. Or rather, let's position it on the floor first before we darken it. So press Ctrl T to take up your transformation to right click and press on distort. So when you press on distort, it allows you to move it around like this. So when you move it around, you position it on the floor like that. Make it spread out a little so you can be seeing the book itself. You can be seeing the shape and all of that. Nice. Just something like that. Take your time and get it right. It's very important. Aha. So we have our book lying on the floor. Let's look at what we have. So we have our book lying on the floor, but it's not looking like a shadow yet. Why? It has color. So to take away that color, just press Ctrl L to open your levels and darken it down. That wasn't part of the plan. Where's our shadow? All right. So Ctrl L to darken it down like that. Beautiful. So have it darkened down. You can now change the blend mode maybe to like soft light to have the original color of the floor come up. So we want to blow it out just a little so it will, it will give us the feeling of a soft light. I'll create our stand visible layer. Go back to our camera roll. I still repeat the settings we did initially. All right. So the reason I'm not doing apply previous is because we came back and Increase the oranges so it's going to give us back our oranges. Wouldn't give all the color effect we did. So I think we did something around this nature. Yeah, then increase that white into our color mixer, popped up our paints. So the next thing we'll be doing now is now to pop up our orange right inside here at the same time. We'll shut this down slightly and we added a big net effect, just a small one like that. Press OK and quickly, what was the next thing we did? So I created a photo filter effect just to give it a global look. So I'm going to drag this over this area and place it there and we have that global look. So if you think it's too low, we can actually increase yours and all of that. But I think it was perfect for me. So this was the image before we started here. This is how far we've brought it to this. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not subscribed and click on the notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Until then, see you.